I was so excited when I came across this request that I could not wait to do this fight. Miguel Cotto versus Danny Swift Garcia going out to Seymour Jones. Let's get into it. Seymour, I thank you for this fight and for participating in this channel. I don't care what weight this fight takes place at. Junior welterweight, welterweight, whatever. What a tremendous matchup. And there's so many factors in this fight to consider. This will be fight of the year, whatever year that it took place. Danny Garcia versus Miguel Cotto. Let's get into it. Danny Swift Garcia, he truly lives up to that name. Hand speed, one of the best left hooks I've seen in boxing. Good footwork. Miguel Cotto also has a great left hook. One of the best body punchers in the business and great power. So with those factors, this makes for fireworks. It truly does. Two tremendous fighters, but who comes out on top? Who comes out on top? I will say that Danny Garcia does have the speed advantage and speed has bothered Cotto they're equal in left hooks. So we could say that this fight is the battle of the left hooks. Danny Garcia has the speed advantage, the hand speed advantage, the footwork advantage, whereas Miguel Cotto has the power advantage. Miguel Cotto is more seasoned. Miguel Cotto has bigger names on his resume. Miguel Cotto has fought in more weight classes but Danny Garcia seems to be following in those footsteps. I never would have imagined Danny Garcia going to 154, but I feel like it's a great weight for him and a great move business-wise for him. So this is one of those fights that are truly hard to call. It really is. Both of these fights are throw, both of these fighters are throwback type fighters. Meaning, meaning they've been in there with the best of their eras. And so you really can't criticize either resume. I mean, their resumes and their level of opposition is wanting for nothing. These days, we often complain about fighters not fighting each other, top fighters not fighting the best. But I can truly say that that's not the case with either one of these guys. I mean, both of these guys have been in there with the best of their respective eras. So this is one I'm having trouble calling because there are so many factors at play. So one thing we have to look at is their strengths, their weaknesses, their advantages and disadvantages. As I said before, Cotto has had trouble with quick fighters. Manny Pacquiao, Floyd Money Mayweather. So speed gives him trouble. But could Danny Swift Garcia handle the power and the body punching of Miguel Cotto? I will say, even in the fights that Danny Garcia has lost, he's been extremely competitive in those fights. Danny Garcia has never been stopped, whereas Miguel Cotto has been stopped. Even in the fights that Danny Garcia has lost, I haven't seen any disadvantages. It just comes down to the game plan and the styles, why he lost those fights. And even in the, in the losses to Thurman and Porter, both of those fights were fairly close. And even in his loss to Spence, he wasn't stopped. Whereas Miguel Cotto, was stopped by Pacquiao. And once again, it all comes down to the stylistic realities. But just weighing all the factors that I've mentioned, I think that Danny Garcia wins this fight by late stoppage or decision. Both fighters are great. I respect both fighters. Both guys have fought the best of their respective eras, but it just comes down to the advantages and the disadvantages in this fight. 
and the advantages belongs to Danny Swift Garcia. Those are my thoughts. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you next time. Can I be honest? I do care about the well-being of the fighters. I care about the well-being of any human being. Do I care about the politics? No. Do I care about how much the fighters are making? No. Do I care about what's going on behind the scenes? No. Do I care about the contracts or what deals the fighters made? No. It's truly not my problem. Look, you have to negotiate. You get what you negotiate. That is not, that's not to say that I make an excuse for corruption and things like that. But at the end of the day, as I always say, I'm a fan. I'm just a mere fan. And in any competitive sport, you want to see the best fight the best. So I'm going to say stop boring me with things that I don't care about. Stop boring me with things that I, as a fan, don't benefit from. Stop boring me with things that aren't my problem. Now, by me saying that it's not my problem, that's not to say that I don't care. That's not to say that, that I don't care when someone gets ripped off or when someone gets cheated or conned. But at the same time, we all have a responsibility in this. And me as a fan, me as a consumer, a lot of those things aren't my problem. The politics aren't my problem. The deals, the money aren't my problem. I don't get a single dime or a penny from what these fighters make. And so while we're going so hard for what the fighters are making, not making is beyond me. You're not getting a dime of this money. But a lot of you fans seems to be negotiating on behalf of the fighters. And there's a fine line. There's a fine line. You care about the wealth. I'm sorry. We're supposed to care about the health and the well-being of any human being. But at the same time, this is a competitive sport. Okay, it's, it's a competitive sport. And these guys at the top have convinced us that they are the best of the best. And when you put yourself in that position and when you've promoted yourself to be the best, we as fans are going to have expectations. Or we're supposed to have expectations. So don't get on a high horse and lecture me about the well-being of the fighters or lecture me about the politics of the sport, I don't care. I wasn't there for that. I'm not there for that. I'm not a part of those discussions. That's for the fighters, managers, and promoters to work out. Any business you frequent or any business you go into, if you're a consumer of anything, at the end of the day, all you care about is getting what you pay for. It's the way of the world. You just care about getting your money's worth, getting a good product, getting quality service or a quality product. So why is it any different in boxing? We all know that boxing is a risk. I respect these fighters. I respect these great warriors for taking these risks. But why put a burden on the fans? You all chose this profession and you all negotiated your contract. And I'm not trying to be insensitive. And I hope you get the best deal that you deserve. And you fighters deserve everything. But please, please don't misunderstand where I'm coming from. Please don't take this as me not caring about you at all. I care about the fighters. I love the fighters. But at the end of the day, I'm a fight fan. I'm a boxing fan. And if I'm a fan of a fighter, I believe in that fighter. I believe in that fighter. I support that fighter. And those fighters, they know the risk that they're taking 
when they step into that ring. Get everything that's coming to you. Negotiate the best deal. All I'm saying is don't make me as the fan, the bad guy, just because I simply want the best to fight the best. What's so wrong with that? It's no different in basketball. You want the best teams to play against each other. Football, you want the best teams to face one another. Boxing. I love watching these top guys in action. But it's natural. If you have a few top guys at top on at I'm sorry, if you have a few top guys on top to want to see the best fight the best. Let me put it this way. We just want to see these guys evenly match. And so why are we making excuses for mismatches? But then we demonize the fans who want to see the guys that are evenly matched or fighting on a level playing field. It makes no sense. Fighters, I love you guys, but at the end of the day, I'm a fan.